Hello, and welcome to this webinar on conducting a self-audit of your Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System, or MS4, program. We at the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, or MPCA, have put together this guidance for Phase 2 MS4 program staff so you have a better understanding of the self-audit process and are empowered to conduct a self-audit of your own stormwater program. In this webinar, we will discuss what a self-audit is and the benefits of performing one, how to conduct a self-audit, what to do with the findings and how they fit in your overall program management, and provide you with additional resources. First, we'll give an overview of self-auditing an MS4 program. A self-audit of your MS4 program is an assessment of your stormwater pollution prevention program, also called a SWIP. Your SWIP is your stormwater management program. It is all activities planned and implemented to meet the requirements of the MS4 general permit and effectively reduce or minimize impacts to stormwater in your community. The self-audit follows the adaptive management principles highlighted on this slide. The overarching problem has already been assessed. It is that pollutants can enter the stormwater within your MS4 from a variety of sources. Solving the problem in your community is the development and implementation of your SWIP, which is designed to reduce or minimize pollutants entering your MS4. The self-audit comes into the adaptive management cycle by being the evaluation component. Through the self-audit, you are evaluating the practices you've implemented to see what is working and what isn't to mitigate negative effects to your community's stormwater. In the self-audit, or a similar process, you are evaluating your SWIP against the MS4 general permit requirements and the goals you set for your stormwater program. After the self-audit is complete, you should adjust your stormwater management program to reflect the findings of the evaluation. This is a continuous process, and you will be regularly adjusting and adapting your program as you implement new strategies or learn new techniques that are more effective in pr protecting stormwater within your community. The MS4 General Permit has many requirements permittees must address that are intended to protect stormwater. A self-audit will evaluate your program based on, at a minimum, the MS4 General Permit requirements. The self-audit will allow you to reflect on the actions your stormwater program has carried out or those you plan to during the permit term and how they fulfill the requirements of the MS4 general permit. The vast majority of the requirements are detailed in the minimum control measures or MCMs of the MS4 general permit. The MCMs are on public education and outreach, public participation and involvement, illicit discharge detection and elimination, construction site stormwater runoff control, post-construction stormwater management, and lastly, pollution prevention and good housekeeping for municipal operations. Each MCM has different requirements for activities that need to be conducted or implemented and items that need to be documented. Anything not related to a specific MCM is generally considered overall program management. During the self-audit, you will review all of the requirements from what is happening in your stormwater program to what is being documented. Because the self-audit requires someone closely familiar with your stormwater program to know where to find the documents being audited and who is performing aspects of the SWIFT, the self-audit is generally conducted by your stormwater program manager. This will reduce the preparation time and help ensure accurate results. <clears throat> there are many reasons to take the time to conduct a self-audit. First, a self-audit can identify areas in which your stormwater program is deficient or in non-compliance with the MS4 general permit. The MPCA conducts audits of stormwater programs and any noncompliance that is observed is addressed through official enforcement actions that sometimes carry a financial penalty. Your self-audit may uncover these areas before the MPCA, allowing you to correct the deficiencies on your own schedule and without the MPCA's intervention. You may also discover changes that need to be made to your program. The self-audit will give you a high-level view of your program as well as an understanding of how smoothly the day-to-day -day activities are running. This may bring to light ways to make the program more efficient or ways to restructure your program to bring it into compliance. Part of the self-audit is evaluating who is involved in your program and in what capacities. A self-audit may help you determine the number of staff or financial resources needed to maintain a stormwater program that is fully in compliance with the MS4 general permit. The self-audit will help you prepare for an MPCA audit. The MPCA tries to audit MS4 programs roughly every seven years. If you haven't been audited, or it has been a while since your last audit, a self-audit will help you gather relevant documents and give insight on questions that might be asked during the audit.
A crucial component of a self audit and your stormwater management program is your SWIFT document. The SWIFT document is the foundation of your stormwater management program, and you'll rely on it heavily during the self audit. The SWIFT document is also called part two of the application for permit coverage. When your program originally applied for permit coverage under the existing MS4 general permit, you detailed for each MCM your program goals, best management practices, or BMPs, your municipality has already implemented and those that will be implemented to meet the program goals. It also lists the staff or positions responsible for BMP implementation. The SWIFT document is a fluid living document, so you can update it at any time. The SWIFT document best relates the BMPs you've implemented or activities you are undertaking with how they meet the goals of your stormwater management program. This provides the context for what your stormwater program is doing. As shown in this figure, most of the MS4 general permit requirements are in the bottom of this spectrum, documenting activities and raising awareness. But these actions lead to improved receiving waters, which can be difficult to see at the time. For example, documenting all enforcement actions, including verbal warnings, is an MS4 general permit requirement and falls at the bottom of this circle. It can be hard to see how documenting a verbal warning is impacting water quality. However, when you document an enforcement action against a contractor who failed to install perimeter control, you are raising the builder's awareness of the rules and expectations in your community. The builder will be, will be more likely to install perimeter control at their next project, which will keep sediment from leaving the construction site and entering your storm sewer system, which also improves stormwater runoff and ultimately receiving waters. Now let's move on to preparing for and conducting the self-audit. Preparation for the self-audit will most likely be the most time-consuming step. You need to gather a lot of documents and possibly interview multiple staff to understand how they're implementing the SWIFT. For the self-audit, gather everything listed on this slide. I won't go through these documents individually, but each of these are either required under various MS4 general permit requirements or demonstrates how your program is managed. There may be additional documentation you will need to gather as well. To conduct a self-audit, we recommend following a self-audit guide, like the MPCA self-audit guidance document, or for a much more in-depth self-audit, the EPA Region 9 self-assessment module. You will find links to those documents at the end of this webinar. Also, refer back to the MS4 general permit during the self-audit. The permit details the exact permit requirements you should be evaluating your program on. The self-audit may have two phases, an office review and field visits. In the office, review all of your written materials. This includes your procedures, like spill response procedures, or your public education implementation plan. Any accompanying checklists, like site inspection or plan review checklists, or your long-term maintenance agreement for maintaining private structural stormwater BMPs. You may need to conduct field inspections. This could include visiting municipal operations to review the BMPs documented on your facility inventory or accompanying an inspector when they conduct construction site inspections. Seeing your program in action will show you if there are disconnects between the written procedures and what is actually happening on the ground. When you've completed the self-audit, collect all of your findings into one summary report, memo, or document. This will allow you to have a single document to review. In addition, if the guide you are using for your self-audit contains questions, answer the questions in this document. If you leave the municipality's stormwater program or you are audited by the MPCA in a few years, you will have this document to refer back to and understand where your program has been. In the summary document, create recommendations for how to improve the program or bring it into compliance. In addition, highlight the success of these successes you've found. You may be able to determine commonalities in the successful aspects that you can incorporate into your recommendation. The MPCA developed a self-audit guidance that you can use to direct your self-audit. If you choose to use the MPCA's guidance, it will walk you through each MCM and overall program management. The self-audit guidance has each, MCM, each MS4 general permit requirement under each MCM. When working through the MPCA's self-audit guidance, make sure that each item is fully complete. We've listed the complete permit requirement, so make sure your documentation or materials fully incorporate all of the required items since this is what the MPCA auditor would look for as well. The self-audit is also a good time to organize all of the required documentation. The MS4 general permit requires a lot of documentation to be retained. It'll be easier when you get to the, the audit notice from the MPCA and for your overall program management to organize all this in one location. For example, organize all materials related to illicit discharge complaints or discoveries and follow-up actions in one folder. 
At the end of each section of the MPCA self-audit checklist, there are general broad questions to think about regarding your program. They are similar to ones that may be asked by an MPCA auditor. Honestly answer these questions and consider what your response says about your program and if enhancements can be made. Similarly, each section has tips on how to enhance your program. Although the tips may be beyond the MS4 general permit requirements, implementing them may further strengthen your stormwater program and protect stormwater within your jurisdiction. Consider the tips to see if you can implement any of them. Once you've completed the self-audit, you're not done. The results of the self-audit should inform your next step. If you identified any areas of deficiencies or noncompliance, it's easier to address these areas now as opposed to when an MPCA staff audits your program. Review all the findings of your program and after you celebrated your successes, determine how to, who will, and when to address the deficiencies. Put together a compliance schedule that can be achieved and work toward addressing your program's weaknesses. Updating regulatory mechanisms can be a much more time-consuming process than creating a written means to document site inspections, so it's important to be realistic with the schedule. Modify your program based on the results of your findings. Did you realize site inspections aren't conducted as often as your site in inspection written procedure states, or that the outfall inspection form doesn't include an area for illicit discharge inspections? Then modify these procedures. Maybe you haven't been completing the quarterly stockpile inspections as required under the permit. Now is your opportunity to change your process. Or maybe you realize you are spending a lot of time creating outreach materials and that your soil and water conservation district has an education and outreach specialist that you could partner with. Now is a great time to change your program to reflect program updates. In addition, as we mentioned in the beginning of this webinar, the SWIFT document is the foundation to your program, but it is also a living document. Update your SWIFT document to include any new goals BMPs, or staff involved in their stormwater management program. Finally, re-educate staff of the MS4 requirements, any relevant changes to your stormwater program, and their role in protecting stormwater. There are many resources available to you as you go through the self-audit process and begin adapting your program. Visit the MPCA self-audit webpage, which includes the MPCA self-audit checklist. The EPA has a more comprehensive self-audit guide, and the NPDS Compliance Center has a free self-audit checklist you might find helpful. The MPCA has guidance on all of the activities you need to retain documentation for, which may help in determining what you need to record and maintain records for. The MPCA also has information on the state-led audit process if you are curious about what an MPCA audit is like. We hope this will encourage you to conduct a self-audit of your program. Thank you for your time.